This video is an introductory tutorial to Carlson Layout, which is Carlson's newest data collection product designed to run on Android. This video should help you get started with the product and give you a brief overview of all the different options in the, in the software. If you have any questions about installation, system requirements, or registration, please download the installation guide that's available on carlsonsw.com. I'm going to go ahead and get it started here by launching Layout from the Android home screen. And the very first thing we see here, which I want to go ahead and point out, is a resume button. So what this button does, if you have run layout the day before and you want to use the same site and the same job and the same instrument, you can just tap resume here and it's going to go ahead and configure anything that needs to be configured and you're going to be up and running layout in just a matter of seconds. Um, so that's what you want to do if you're just going day to day on the same job. In this case, uh, I want to show you how the configuration works. So we're going to switch over to the dashboard, which is what you would see if you had not run previously. The dashboard is kind of a one-stop shop for all the configuration that you need to do to get up and ready to run the software. So the very first thing you need to set in the dashboard is your site and your job. Uh, Carlson Layout does have the concept of sites, which is basically a group of jobs. If you want to, however, it helps you to organize a little bit more smoothly. So in this case, my site is called Maysville, and it's all the jobs that I've done in Maysville. Uh, I can make a new site by plus, pressing the plus icon, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. And then I'm going to pick my job. All the jobs in this site are listed in the combo box already. Or if I need to look at them in a little bit more detail, I can tap the folder icon. And the folder icon allows me to look at the jobs in a gallery view so that I can see a little snippet of what's inside the job. Or I can look in list view, which gives the date or I can tap the calendar and browse by date. So you can see here that I've done four jobs already today on September 30th. And so I could see, you know, if I know I did something last Saturday, I could go look at it that way. I'm going to go ahead and make a new job by tapping the plus icon. And I'm going to call it Sarah 2. And I'm going to leave my units in US feet and press done. So the first thing that most people want to do when they open a new job is bring in some data. Carlson Layout supports point coordinate files, uh, the CRD, the CRDB. If you have data that's just in an ASCII text file, whether it's comma separated or any other format of ASCII text file, we can bring it in from a text file. Uh, we also open DXF and DWG drawing files. Hopefully DGM will be coming soon. And you can load up uh, 10 and grid surface files here as well. So what I'm going to do is open a drawing file. And one of the great things about working on Android is that all of your cloud storage that you already have configured on your device is available to you. So here, um, what this has done is dropped right into my Google Drive because it was the last place I was looking. So I can see on the left that I can get right to my Google Drive or any other cloud storage that I have on my Android device. Um, I'm just going to navigate to it. And here in my Google Drive where I've just dropped the file from my computer, I can go into Drawings and I can load up my drawing file which is a park just outside our office building here at the Carlson headquarters. OK, so I've brought in my drawing. Uh, the next thing I need to do is configure my instrument. Now, just like above, all the instruments that I've previously configured are available in this drop list. If I get too many here, it's a little bit of a trick in layout. Um, notice the gray icon here. If I tap and hold that, I should be able to if I swipe right on it. I get the delete icon, so I can delete some items out of this list if I get tired of if I get too many configurations. Um, so I can either quick pick a configuration here, or I can hit the plus to create a new configuration. So I'm going to hit the plus icon, and I'm going to name my configuration BRX7SEW. And what you'll see here is that Carlson Layout supports all the drivers in the Carlson Library. Everything that's available in any of our products is available in Carlson Layout. So we have under the GPS list, all the manufacturers that you're familiar with, I'm sorry, under the total station list, and under the GPS list, the same. I'm going to go ahead and select the Carlson BRX7 here, since I have one on my desk, and it's our newest receiver. The next thing we want to do is make the connection. So the connection of Carlson Layout is only over Bluetooth, and I can hit the plus icon here to do a search and find all the available devices, but in this case, I've already found this device, so I can just tap connect, and we're going to make the Bluetooth bond. Okay, now that I'm connected to my receiver, the next thing I'm going to see is the 
GPS receiver settings screen. And this is going to be all the settings that are specific to the receiver or the total station that I've connected to. So on my BRX7 settings screen, um, I've got audio mode. I can enable shore fix. Um, the elevation mask can be changed. And I can turn on and off various constellations. And up here in the rod height, I'm going to go ahead and set my rod height. Now what you're looking at now is the the simple distance entry keyword that's available only in Carlson layout that allows you to very quickly enter distances. So in this case, I know my rod height is two meters, but my job is in feet. So I'm just going to type two M and it's going to do the conversion for me. So this screen lets you enter meters, centimeters, millimeters, feet and inches. And also um, you can do, if you want to get the distance between two points, you're going to select this point icon here and it'll let you enter two point IDs to go ahead and get the distance between them if you want that distance. I'm going to hit green check and you can see that my distance has been, my rod height has been converted into feet and inches. Okay, I'm going to press the RTK tab and here I'm going to select my RTK connection. So this instrument allows for internal radio, GSM, modem, L band if I'm using Atlas and I'm going to go ahead and use data collector internet because I happen to have internet on my tablet. My NTRIP server is already set up here to the Kentucky server. If I want to add a different NTRIP server, I can tap the gear icon here to add a new one. And of course, this dialog also allows listen, listen, and TCP IP direct connections. The mount point is down below the VRS RTCM 3.2 mount point that I've selected. If I want to get more information on that, I can just tap the I icon and get the full information about that mount point. I'm going to go ahead and press done to make the connection. All right, so I'm up and running with my receiver. And the last thing we need to set up here is the coordinate system. Now, in this case, it already is marked as complete because it's pulled it over from my previous job. But if I wanted to change that, I'm going to tap the configure button here. And you'll see it's going to give me an overview of what I've already got selected. So you can see that I've got the Kentucky single zone selected and I don't have a geoid file. So I'm going to change that. On this page, you'll see all the coordinate systems and projections that are available in other Carlson products are available in Carlson layout. So I can tap my transformation. There's a couple of options here. Um, I can use match local coordinates if I have points in a job already and I want to do a localization. If you have a brand new job and you don't care anything about the coordinate system, you could go with UGM automatic zone. Or if you know your projection, you can go ahead and select one from the list. So all the ones that I've previously used are here in this combo buffs. Otherwise, I can plus plus icon and I can add a new one. So here's the, all the available projections. And these boxes are searchable in each box. So it helps define what you're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead over here and I'm going to use Kentucky North because that's what this particular drawing file is using. And go ahead and press done. Okay, so my dashboard is complete and I'm ready to start work. So I'm going to go ahead and press done. All right, what we can see here is a Google map background and overlaid on top of it is my drawing file that I brought in. You can see that um, connected to an antenna that's on the roof of the Carlson software building and the drawing is the park that's just outside the building. So I'm going to go through all the elements that are available in the main screen of Carlson layout, uh, starting with the top bar. What you see in the top bar on the top right um, is the green GPS status icon. This icon is really handy. What it tells me right now, just glancing at it, is that I am fixed on the RTK network. I'm actually shore fixed. That's what the plus means there. So if you see this icon go yellow, it would indicate that the receiver is either float or autonomous. And if you see it go red, it would mean that you've lost your Bluetooth connection to the instrument. So we can tap on that icon to get a little bit more information. And what we see here, is all the status information of the receiver itself. The latitude and longitude and elevation, you can get your error values and your dot values, your latency, and down at the bottom, the ability to reset RTK or even reconfigure the RTK completely if you're having problems with your connection. So um, the other interesting thing about this is that the green bar here matches the color of the icon and it indicates whether you're within all your tolerances. So if, for instance, you were to go outside of your RMS tolerance, what you would see is that the RMS line here would turn yellow to indicate that it's the tolerance that's been exceeded. The top bar would turn yellow and the icon would turn yellow. This means if you try to store, you're going to get a warning message that you've exceeded your tolerance. The other useful thing here are the two icons available right here. 
Um, this is the reference information icon. If you press this, you're going to get all the information about your RTK base, the base position, as well as the distance to the base, which in this case is very, very close. The receiver information is in the eye icon. It will query a receiver for the serial number and battery status and firmware version of your receiver. So here we can see everything about my particular VRX7, the Atlas inscriptions that I have, anything I need to know about my receiver. Um, this can be helpful for technical support. I'm going to close that. The icon that you see directly to the left of that is the an icon that's only available on receivers that have inertial tilt support. So if I tap this, the pink icon here actually indicates that the receiver tilt module is uninitialized. The reason it's uninitialized is that it's sitting at my desk and I haven't moved it. So we can tap that icon to get more information about the tilt. And what's in here is the status, as you can see written there, the orientation, the inclination, um, and all your options that you're going to be using for tilt to pole. Carlson Layout does support tilt to pole corrections, as well as warnings when you go out of tilt and showing the e-bubble. So all that's going to be available under your sensor status icon, which will appear if you're using a receiver that supports it. Next to that is the rod height, which you can tap at any time to change. So again, I'm going to put in two meters here. Easy switch of the rod height right in the top bar, and you can always see what it is. Okay. Um, the main functionality of Carlson Layout is going to be measure and layout. The program is designed to be simple, intuitive, and easy to use. So what we have on the right-hand side is measure and layout. If I tap the measure button on the right, it opens up the measure drawer. Um, all I need to do at this point to walk around storing point is just press the measure button. It's quite simple. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new point called desk. I think I'm at my desk and press the measure button. And it stored a point and written it on the map into as desk. Now before we switch over into layout, I'm going to switch over to the GPS simulation driver because it'll be a little bit easier to show the rest of this demo. So let me just come over here. We're going to add a new driver. And we're going to call it simulation. Okay, I'm going to choose the GPS simulation from the list. And we don't need to connect to anything on the simulation. This is... Okay, let's see if it put us on the map here. Okay, we switched over to the GPS simulation, and because it's simulation, I've got a little joystick screen here at the bottom left that I can turn on and off, so if I want to move my simulator a little bit, I'm going to walk on over to the map. Oh, slow that down. Okay, so now let's look at layout. Um, your layout features, the, the bulk of your layout features are over in the layout menu. If I tap right here. So what this allows me to do is create a layout. I can either lay out one element or I can create a whole list. You can even load and save a list of layout, the items to lay out. So if someone in the office says, I need you to lay out certain items, they can send that to you that you can load as a layout list. In this case, I'm just going to click Add. And I can either add a point or a line. Or if I wanted to do a surface and just walk around on the surface and see the cut and fill over a surface that's available as well, or a fixed elevation. So I'm going to lay out a point, and I'm going to choose the point that I just stored, the desk point, and hit select. Okay, what we're looking at now is the basic layout screen of Carl's of layout. So the big arrow, because it's using the internal compass of the tablet, the big arrow should be pointing. It's a little bit funny because I'm using simulation, but out in the field, that big arrow is going to be pointing directly toward the point in the field. Um, you'll notice here on the left that you can change the tablet to say I want to use compass orientation. So if I turn this on, and then what's happening now is this tablet is actually spinning with the orientation. As I turn the tablet in my hands, the map is going to update. So turning on compass orientation and doing layout is going to be very, very intuitive in the field. It's the big arrow is going to be pointing in the direction that you need to walk. So if I were standing in the field, I need to turn around and walk the other way. I'm going to turn that off because I'm running the simulation. Um, and, and I'm just going to walk my simulator back. So you can see that I need to move here a distance of uh, 108 feet, or 129 feet, I'm sorry, back toward the point. I've walked way far away. Okay. So now I'm closing in on the point, and I'll walk past it here. 
doing it a little bit. Let's see what I'm doing. As I get really close to the point, what you can see is the proximity errors appear. These appear when you, you get within a couple of feet of the point. And at this point, you're no longer just trying to walk in a direction. You're trying to really hone in on where it is. And the proximity errors will help you do that. Let's keep walking past it here. Okay. So I'm walking right toward it now. And the errors have gone green. The green indicates that I'm within stakeout tolerance. Um, I, as you can see, the numbers of how far away I am are available in the thing, but I'm within tolerance. So at this point, I can just press measure. How my rod height went to zero here. Went ahead and stored the point. Oh, because I switched to the simulator. I lost my rod height. I'm sorry. So um, I'm going to go ahead and store my point. And here I can see the difference between my design point and my measure point. I just store that. So we're done with the stakeout at this point. I'm going to go ahead and fix this rod height back to two meters. Okay. Uh, the other interesting thing about layout is if I want to stake out something else, because I want to stake out this point again, um, and I want, if I don't want to see this big panel here, I can just close it and you get minimized layout icons up in the upper left hand corner so that I can stop the layout or I can measure, I can continue to lay out with the full map view available to me. That's really helpful about layout. I'm going to go ahead and stop. All right, so that's the basics of measure and layout. Let me go through the icons on the left-hand side just to give you an overview. Um, first, we have the Zoom Extents button, which will zoom to the full drawing. And you'll notice that this switched over to the previous icon when I did that zoom. That gives you a couple seconds to quickly tap it and go back to the previous zoom level if you hit the button on accident or you zoomed in just to see something. So you'll see that zoom previous up here um, in times when you need it. Then you have the auto zoom level. Auto zoom turns on and off to whether you want to zoom on the map as you're out walking with your GPS receiver. The layers icon gives me access to all the layers in my drawing. Um, I can see each layer here. And if I want to turn one on or off, I can. And I can also change the colors here as well on any particular layer. Up at the top, I can turn off point numbering, point descriptions, elevations, and map background. So I'm going to turn off the map background just to clean up my drawing a little bit. Okay, so that's the layers icon. Um, the tools, we'll come back to tools. The create menu is where you're going to go to draw in the field when you need to create anything in the field. So lots of options in here. I'll go through a few of them and explain a few more. If I tap the create icon, the first thing I get is the ability to create points. So if I go ahead and tap points here, what this does is I can just tap anywhere on my drawing. And snapping is very automatic in layout. If I tap the corner for something, it's going to snap right to it. So I'm going to just tap the corner of this building. It's gone ahead and snapped to it, and I can create a point here if I want. Okay. Um, if you tap and hold on the drawing, um, you get what we call the zoom window. The reason that's there is that when you're tapping and holding on an Android device, you can't see what's underneath your finger. So you tap and hold, you get a pop-out window that kind of zooms to whatever is under your finger. And it also shows you what snap is about to be used. So in this case, because I'm in the middle of this line, it selected the nearest snap, as you can see from the uh, orange icon there in the top left-hand corner. So if I let this go, it's created a snap there. And I'm going to create a point here as well. Okay. So that's how you create points. That's very easy to do. You can snap and create points very quickly off your drawing. The next thing I want to show in the Create menu is the Sketch option. It's very, very useful if you want to add, if you want to create um, a building pad or you need to draw just a quick building, of a building on the drawing. Let me show you how this works. So I am going to start from point three on my drawing. Okay, and I need to draw a line starting from point three, but I want it to be at the azimuth of four to three. So I want it to draw off of that line. So here in the angle box, I can either type in an angle, but in this case, I want to use the point option. And I'm going to choose point four to point three. And what that's going to do is grab that angle between those two. I'm going to accept. 
And now you can see in the drawing that, well, I've tapped it and moved it. Let me do that again. I'm teaching you. Well, I can tap. You, can, you can actually just tap and move this angle around. I find it more useful to pull something off the drawing. It's probably more practical. Try this again. Accept, accept. Okay, so now you can see it. And I'm going to draw a line that's 50, 50 feet long there. You can see the preview here. When I create, it's drawn the line. Okay, so the easy thing to do at this point is you'll notice these icons here. These are the plus 90 minus 90, minus 90 icons. So I'm going to add 90 to my angle and create another 50 foot line. And I'm going to add another 90, create, and add 90, and create. And very easily, I've drawn a building um, at the angle of three to four right off the edge of my what I'm doing. So that's a really quick way to sketch in the field. I think you'll get used to it and be able to use it. You'll see there's options where you can create the points and the lines. If you just want to do points or just want to do lines, that's available here. And you can choose the point layer and the line layer that you're adding items to as you work. Okay. So that's sketching. Um, the line options, very simple drag and drop tool. So um, even a simpler way to draw lines. If you just tap that, it, what it allows you to do is just tap anywhere and draw a line and drag these line ends around on the screen. So if I want to snap to here, and maybe I want to snap up to here and create very easily drag and drop lines and create lines as you work. All right. Um, the points from entity, what that allows you to do is if you wanted to create points at every intersection and endpoint of an entire layer or in, in a box selection, you can do that there. So um, you can tap that and then it will allow you to create a box and create a bunch of points all at once. And then the draw building envelope command will take whatever you want to and draw a the smallest box that it can around whatever entities you've selected so that you could do excavation or for buildings or whatever you need to do. Um, the reference line command allows for input of reference lines. If you're starting from nothing, a lot of people have drawings with reference lines, and you may need to start from maybe one point and draw reference lines horizontal and vertical. That's the reference line command for that purpose. So this is all the drawing that you might want to do in layout. Um, the last thing here is the tools menu. So in the tools menu, I have a quick distance tool. If I tap that, it allows me to kind of just drag around on the screen and measure distances to my heart's content. Um, and using snapping, obviously. So I want to measure the distance maybe from this line to this line. Just It's giving you distances on the fly as you work. You see the distance up there in the top, really big. A more precise way of doing this is the inverse tool if you're trying to look for exact answers. In this case, I can maybe find out what the distance between 6 and 7 is, which should be 50 feet if I didn't screw up. Yeah, and we can quickly see that the horizontal vertical distance is 50 feet there, and, and that's the inverse tool. And then last in here, you have the area tool, which is really handy. So I should be able to just tap, 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 and quickly get the area of the, this element. Um, so that's the area tool. Pretty handy to use in the field if you just need to see very quickly what, what an area is and the perimeter as well. Okay. Um, so we've gone through the orientation, turns orientation on and off, and I can show and hide my, this is for the simulator to show and hide the simulator. Okay, up in the left-hand corner, um, here we can go back to the dashboard at any time if I want to review my setup. That's the gear icon. And then up in the Carlson Pyramid are some things that you don't need probably actively as you're working, but other features. So in the points dialog, I can see all the points that are available to me here, and I can see where the point came from. So you can see that I measured points one and two with the GPS, but I selected all the rest of the points, uh, created them all with, with the Create tool. Um, you can also filter here by layer and description to get, um, to, if you've got a really large point list, to be able to see less of them. And here you can tap any point, and I should be able to get the point information of where exactly it came from, when it was created and the coordinates. So I should say get this one. We can see that it was measured with the Carlson BRX7 on September the 30th. And my timestamp kind of looks funny. Um, and then what the transformation was used on it. So I'll go ahead and hit close here. Um, that's the point list. 
Next, we have the import. If we wanted to add more data to your job, you can do that here. You can import, import points if you have a CSV point list or your drawing or whatever whatever you want to add to your job. There can only be one drawing file at once, so if you load a new drawing file, it will wipe out the one that you're using and replace it. But you could load more points at any time. Export allows you to create reports of anything that you've done. So this is a very flexible tool. You can export a coordinate list, um, and you can, if you want to do coordinates, you can do the CRD, the CRDB. You can do um, a comma-separated ASCII file, and this one allows more customization of the ASCII file. Or you can do just a PDF. So if I decide I want to do a PDF of my coordinates that I need to send back to my boss, and I can add, if I want to add what, a, an amount to each point ID, I could do that here, and I can choose what range. But I'm going to export everything. And it's created a little PDF file. Uh, you can see the path of where it's stored it right here. But what's more useful here is, once again, because we're an Android, it's really easy to share. So I can tap the share icon up in the right-hand corner. And this is going to give me access to every sharing tool that I have available on my tablet. So in this case, I can save it to my drive. I can email it to somebody. Um, whatever you have available that's installed, it's going to bring all that up. So it makes it very, very easy to share your reports with somebody back in the office. Okay. So the other types of reports, you can do a stake report. Again, you have lots of options for how you want the format to be, and each one of these is, is shareable. You can export the drawing, or we can even export across an RW5 file if you're familiar with that format. Let's export. Uh, the next thing we have is settings. We try to keep settings at a minimum in layout, but if you need to get in here and change your job units, um, these are just display settings because the job itself is uh, unitless. But, or it's, sorry, it's always in metric. So these are just display settings uh, for the job. And your proximity tolerance, this is in layout when we determine whether or not when we go between the big arrow and the small arrows. And then other tolerances available here as well to change. And you can turn on Google Maps here as well. And if you don't like a particular kind of snap, you can also turn off snaps here to customize how you want your snaps to work. And lastly, the About screen is where you can check out your registration and change the languages. We are offering Carlson Layout in many languages, even as this first release, and we intend to add more. So that is that. The last thing I want to show you is that for really quick work, if I just want to tap a point on the screen, if I tap point 0.6 on the screen here, I can go ahead and choose point 0.6. And what I get here on the left is the context menu. And that I can either tap layout, and it will start laying out this point immediately. If I tap information, I can get point information. I can do a zoom to if I want to zoom in. And if I'm using the simulator and I'm want to jump over to that point, I can just tap jump to and it'll move my simulator over there. I can also delete it and close it from here. So there's a lot that you can do. You can lay out a point without ever even going into the layout menu. This is probably the quickest way to lay out. So this tutorial has been an overview of the software. I hope that you use it and find it intuitive and easy to use. And please call us at Carlson, Carlson, if you have any questions, or contact support at carlsonsw.com.